welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 172 and happy new year it's now 2022 and we have survived another year of craziness joy pain love and literally everything else life has to offer if you're listening to this i am glad you're here because whoo Honestly, being here is uh, an accomplishment in and of itself, and also a topic of today. So to start this year off, I had to bring in the big ones. This episode is with my good friend Alexandra Pika. Not only is she an incredible artist, actress, singer, all that good stuff, she's also one of my favorite people in the entire world. We met back in 2014 while auditioning for our first movie, Tethered, and we hadn't had a chance to really hang out since then, so this was so long overdue, and I mentioned it several times. Uh, We catch up with each other, Uh, we talked about her tethered experience, making a three and a half hour commute to set every weekend for months, then going on to move to Atlanta, getting into yoga, becoming a health coach, traveling by yourself, the benefits of that, some really cool trips that she's made recently, the importance of being present, surviving a sand pit in Death Valley, trying a bunch of new things at once, playing multiple characters in her new movie Did I, and so much more. We covered a bunch of... I'm excited. Alex is amazing, and I can't wait for you guys to get to know her. So, without further ado, let's do this. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 172, with Alexandra Pika. Theme song time. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, my friend? Wow, it's so good to see your face. Back at you. I I feel so much lighter already. <laughs> uh, I'm, this doesn't feel real, to be honest. It doesn't. This is really, I don't know what is coming over me right now. This is very, it's like, are you still alive? I'm, I know. I, I'm just making it. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. When did we do, when did we do that movie? Was that six years ago? Yeah. Yeah, it was 2015 because our audition was the 14, so we had to wait for Nathan, and it's 2022 right. now. We have to wait for Nathan. I can't like, I think exactly. that's what doesn't feel real. Is I all think those so. Days. So this right now, I'm like, yeah, is it my dean? Yeah, is this it. really happening? I can touch. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost, almost. Just think really hard. Oh my gosh. Know. You know, I was driving home from work and uh, I was thinking about our, our little podcast session tonight. And all I kept mm-hmm. thinking was like, I don't want you to ask any questions about me. I just want to ask <laughs> about you. I just want to know what you've been up to. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nothing. I peaked. <laughs> <laughs> That's so not true. <laughs> I'm just like, has anyone done like one of these for you? Has anyone interviewed you for your you know own? What? Yes. Once. But- I, uh, I did, a, I did, a, and this was years ago. Um, okay. uh, I do another show called the Dorky Diva show, which was a star Wars podcast is now just a regular show with the co-host of mine. And she oh, brought cool. that up and she was like, you should be a guest. I was like, I don't think so. And she wore me down over years and I had her interview me. That's amazing. I haven't seen you since the premiere, right? It has to have been that long. I mean, we've, we've talked yes. on the, you know, but and we did the reunion, which was last year before that before that because i, came that. Out last I was year. like what are you talking about what reunion yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're right that was yes. that was wasn't that during the pandemic it was yeah. it was yes. it was like the end ish of 2020 because mm-hmm. blisters came out in 2021 so it would have okay. been i don't know time is weird and i have a bad perception of it before the pandemic now it's like I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now I, mean, I feel like there's just like a blip of time yes um you know everyone talks about they're like oh yeah you know it's been this long and I'm like no it's not those two years didn't count so mm. no it wasn't that long yeah yeah <laughs> I always tell people I'm excited to say we've been through it like this sucks now on the other side I'd be like remember the pandemic that was pretty wild but we're still <laughs> in it so it's like what is what is going on 
I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also weird because a lot of times I would say a majority of the time when I have someone on my show, it's mm -hmm. a stranger that I've never talked to before. So I'm Is getting, it? yeah, almost, almost every podcast I've done. That's the first time I've ever talked to them. You know, that's news to me because this whole time I was like, you know, who's the most interesting person, Brian, because he you knows know. all these cool people. I don't know who keeps letting me talk to them. That's the problem. You know, <laughs> I mean, that part doesn't surprise me, yeah, though. It's, You're just incredible and everyone it. knows it. And I'm so, editing yeah. all of this out. All Please of this is none of this is going to happen. <laughs> no, <needs> to <laughs> I've known we so I'm this is way overdue for me and you to, to just I just wanted a reason to hang out with you again. It's been so long and just I was thinking about it as well. I was like, I'm going to hang out with Alex tonight. I'm so excited. And then I started thinking like, our story with Tethered started the same way because yeah. we were both in the parking lot at the same audition and stuff. But I realized all the time that we've hung out, I've never asked where you're from, like originally. Really? Not once. Not well, once. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. Where am I from? What I do. Um, <laughs> where was I born <laughs> or where did I grow up? Well, I'll just say I was, this might make sense because I'm a little okay. bit of a you know. Here we go. Um, Let me strap in. Okay. Let's go. Helmet on. So if you ever thought that I was just like this alien creature, you may be right because I was born, <laughs> <laughs> born in Jupiter, Florida. Oh, Florida. So, Got it. Yes. Got it. Okay. Florida, okay. Jupiter. I like um, it. Yes. And then we moved when I was one to Orlando and I, I grew up in Orlando. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you ever go yeah. back to Jupiter or Orlando's home? Oh, I mean, Jupiter, I go back all the time. We had these neighbors oh. um, who pretty much became our family. Like they're cool. my second, you know, the third, not second, third pair of grandparents. Sure. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, like my, my aunts and uncles, but, but through like friendship. Um, gotcha. So my brother and I, we would go back like many, many summers. We would spend like a whole summer with them. Um, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, they're part of my family. So I do I go back that. quite often. Interesting. Yeah. I, I grew up in Orlando and never left until, you know, I went to Atlanta. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> First time I left. I mean, that makes sense. But you brought up something um, about how, like, all the times we actually got to talk and, yeah. like, be friends. Yes. Was not actually, like, while we were acting. Like, we were no. very few scenes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> It was like, what was it? It was like the last day that we were doing the parking lot scenes. And yeah. like, you and I were in the car together alone for like yeah. the first time ever. And we were like, yep. you're cool. I like it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, dang, I wish we would have spent more time. You know, <laughs> got him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Wild. Wild. Yeah. So I know you as an actor. I've always <laughs> known you as an actor. Mm -hmm. was that something you always wanted to do or what were you into growing up oh dude I wanted to do so many things yeah talk to me. <laughs> I wanted to be everything I was okay. like as a child I just couldn't even decide I was like I want to be a dolphin trainer Perfect. I want to be a veterinarian I want to be a singer Close. yeah uh <laughs> I, <laughs> I want to be a singer I want to be an artist I want like a marine biologist I just couldn't decide I see a thread. Um, There's some animals here. Some stuff yeah, going on. Right? Yeah. I see it. I like yeah. animals. I had a lot of friends who were like, you should be a teacher. I just feel like you have like that nature. And I just, I don't know. I, I enjoy being a teacher every now and then, but sure. um, I feel like because they wanted me to do that, I was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> I feel not. you. I feel like, <laughs> am I teaching dolphins? In that case, <laughs> that's all yeah, I need. You know, and now I'm a yoga <laughs> teacher so sure. <laughs> no way <laughs> they got you they just had to whittle I, you down i know well i mean i did fine i enjoy it in many facets like i taught um i did like some educational workshops for shakespeare mm -hmm. um while i was in atlanta and that was a lot of fun and cool. I teach, um a little girl or i used to I, I taught her like little crafts every now and then we'd do zoom Boom. and we'd do crafts together that's nice yeah just like you know little things here and there but just enough I, to keep the people at bay that were like, a teacher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but being an actor, um, you know, everybody, I feel like everybody has that story where they're like, this is the moment that I knew. Sure. I, I don't have that story. 
That's um, okay. You don't need it. I, I don't really remember. <laughs> I don't really remember. I just, um, maybe I blocked it out. I don't know. Probably best. Probably best. As know. with most traumas, you know, <laughs> just bury them. It just sort of became, <laughs> yeah, right. It just became a part of me. Like it just was, it was what I did, what I was going to do. Sure. Um, and, but I couldn't find any like acting training while I was in middle school. And my parents, my parents didn't know anything because they didn't come from that world either. So sure. it was until high school that like, I finally got into theater class and I was a freshman and I wanted to try out for the musical, but the auditions had already passed, but I was Ooh. like, but I was like buddies with our drama teacher. There you, you know? go. You no. Know, um, and so he let me audition with the, um, um, with our chorus teacher. And I was like, I don't care what I want. I just want to be a fish. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thread again. I know, I know. And I was like, <laughs> it'll make more sense when I, when I tell you what the actual show was. <laughs> oh, <perfect. laughs> I hope it's just a regular show. It's a, it's a streetcar named desire. I feel like I would Yeah. Like right. <laughs> Waiting for good out. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it, it was, um, oh gosh, what was it? It was, um, Flipper, the musical. No. Oh, I wish. That'd Imagine be cool. it'd be the perfect um, circle. No, no, right. <laughs> No, it was um, Susical the Musical. Oh, boom. There's fish yeah, in there. There's red fish, fish, blue fish, all yeah, kinds of fish. Exactly. And I was like, I, I just it. want to be one of the fish. And uh, and I was. I was a fish. Oh, sweet. And, and I was a who. Um, oh. And that's how I, you know, and Carly and I, we got really close through that too. Amazing. So, yeah, Love we her. were who's together. I know, I know. Perfect. And then, and then from there, the next year, I auditioned for the play and I got one of the leads as a sophomore. And I was like, oh, maybe Get I'm- Get it. Yeah, I'm like, maybe I'm good at this. <laughs> sure, sure. And then it just went on from there, you know, each year trying to, um, you know, have more challenges. And um, and then it wasn't until I like really got full training until I yeah. went into college. Um, and I just like would spend days in the library. Like people would think I was weird. I'd come out <laughs> with duffel bags of books. I'm not kidding you. Good. And I'd come home duffel bags of books um just like looking at all the plays and different acting styles i just was like kind of obsessed i didn't really have a college like social sure. life who needs <laughs> like them? <at> all. <laughs> i don't <laughs> like at all um and actually tethered was my first well i say it was for my first film gig but by the time we actually Ooh, ended oh, up yeah, filming sure. <laughs> it's your first film audition <laughs> yes it was my first one um I, yeah, actually, I guess that was my like first film audition. Wow. wow. Good for you. That's weird. <laughs> that, like, and people don't know Fort mm -hmm. Myers to Orlando is how yeah. long of a drive? It's about three and a half hours. You drove three and a half hours to be at a 7 a.m. Yeah. audition. I know. For your first gig. I know. And then Chris later on, he was like, I didn't think anyone would show up at seven. And I'm over here being like, I woke up at 5 a.m. Yeah, I was like, I've been up all night. <laughs> Literally, I was like, I drove the night before. Yeah. Um, Ridiculous. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I just was really hungry for opportunity and to sort of um, continue to challenge myself. And so sure. my brother lived there. I was like, great. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I was like, I'll just go visit my brother and at the same time do an audition. Boom. Um, yeah. Two birds. And it worked out. Yeah. But that, but it, it is funny to say that that was my first like real film audition. And then I mm -hmm. did a short film, like I filmed a short film before we shot, Sweet. but tethered was my first feature. Sure. And it is, it, that is, that is definitely, um, an oddity to do like a feature so soon without doing like a lot of short films before that. Tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely, that was a, a, grand experience for sure Sure. what yeah. was it that kind of drew you to it because acting is such a specific thing that requires a lot of work and mm -hmm. you have to be into it because of how much work it is to yeah. randomly fall in like what was it that kept it I think the curiosity yeah. I'm just like innately a very curious person Same. um which you know is a blessing and a curse I'm sure you know uh-huh <laughs> so it's, it's definitely like a condition I think Yes. So we're like, we have to try everything. And my mother, she's always like, please just pick one thing. Like, 
know, I'm like, I'm working on it. Um, cause I tried everything. I was like Good. gymnastics and, uh, swimming and tennis and soccer and track. And mind you, a majority of those things I was terrible at, um, <laughs> but I just had to try them. <laughs> just, you know, hey, you don't know if you don't try. I know. know. I, my parents never really forced me to do anything. It was usually me, you know, sure. doing it to myself. Um, <laughs> Um, I guess it was the curiosity. I've just like been really fascinated with human nature, um, mm -hmm. like why we make decisions or certain behavior, like um, innate qualities are just really fascinating to me. Um, and it just, it's so cool. It is. It really is. <laughs> it's just so cool. To, like, you, you know, obviously as I get older, my acting style um, changes with me and, um, you know, yeah. So it has I, to. right. Right. So yeah. I feel like old interviews or whatever, I used to say like, you become the character, yeah. <laughs> yes. you know, you just are them. And I'm like, no, it's not that yeah. anymore for me. It's really me morphing who I am now and, mm -hmm. and like sort of trying to put myself in their shoes and, um, just tell the story, mm -hmm. like bottom line, do the best I can with my life experiences thus far mm -hmm. to, to tell the story. So I feel really lucky when, you know, um, a director or a producer or a friend puts me in the room to sort of, you know, have a chance to, to do that. Yeah. Cause I learn about myself while doing it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that, I think that, you know, I, really keeps I us think there. so too. I think that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah. It's the, it's the inner learning. Be like, Oh, this is a part of me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to board that up later. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. Talk to my therapist about that. Yep. 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 My met method does not work for me. Um, I tried it once. Mm. Do not recommend it. Really? Oh, oh man. I, I can't, I couldn't I stop crying. Oh. Like legit got to a point where I was like, all right, where are we going to go? I was like, this is where I go. It, it brings up a sense of memory and yeah. broke down crying real bad. And then yeah. when he yelled gut, I couldn't turn it off. And I was like, yeah. technique yeah. is not for me. Nope. Sense, sense memory can be really tricky. Um, yep. I will say though, you, you may, you know, be turned off by it now just from mm -hmm. that experience. Mm -hmm. However, it does work for some people. If you, it does. Create, if you have some distance Correct. With, with that sense memory. So if you have, um, what's the word moderation, uh, or control mm -hmm. or things that I mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really just an awareness, like a self-awareness yeah. Yeah. of like, there's been enough time. I've done enough healing from that important moment. word. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That like, I, I'm able to, in a way, turn it on and off or, you know, yep. connect with it and then disconnect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and which, which is really hard as an actor starting out. Cause you have to yeah. learn all that in the most difficult of ways. And like, nobody tells you that's the thing is like, when you're trying to learn, I've realized a lot, like I've worked with some people. I'm like, Oh, how do you do that? They're like, Oh, you know, I'm just the character. I was like, you bastard. But then <laughs> other times somebody will be like, Oh, just do this. And I'm like, wow. It's like a magician telling another magician the trick. Like, Oh, you just yeah. put your fingers like this. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. But it's I'm going to tell you something else though, with every project, every audition, every day, like you will learn something new that mm -hmm. works for you in a new way, sure. or you'll even find that the things that you've been using in the past don't work anymore. Yep. Yeah. You mentioned the, like how you would have answered a question a while ago. I think about those interviews we did very <laughs> untethered. And I was like, yes. I don't agree with anything I'm saying here. No way. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm referring to. Is, is those exact interviews where I'm like, <laughs> Who did I think I was? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, I have was no like, idea. Oh, I know how this works. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. I know. I, I mean, know. kudos though, because we answered the questions as professionally as we thought. You know, we took we took the job seriously. That's true. You know. But I, also oh my gosh, so seriously. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which I now I think back and I'm like, we should have or I I'll speak for myself. I should have had more fun. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Chris and I ever told you, um, like when we first met after the audition process, like after I got no, it, I don't think so. I, okay. So I drove, drove to Fort Myers again for the next day. I was going to be filming. Got it. And I was like, 
so professional, <laughs> so like, you know, <laughs> so business. I'm an actress. Sorry. Yes, I'm an actor. Yeah. Yes. And I need to talk to my director. Yes. And so I said, let's get lunch and like, let's talk Burrowed about brows and all. Yes. Let's <laughs> talk about the script. And I have <laughs> lots of questions. God. Click, click. <laughs> I was so young, my gosh. <laughs> um, and this is not to say that I wouldn't still do this now. I would. But For I have, sure. <laughs> I have a better understanding of like what to actually talk about. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so, you know, and I feel like Chris is taken, <laughs> taken by surprise by this behavior. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm just like, I need to talk to you about the script. That's right. And, uh, I had all these, I can't remember if I had like a notebook or like note cards of all the questions I had about the character and her Fantastic. past. Fantastic. Yes. And I was like, I need to know all these answers. And Chris was just like, I mean, you know how chilly is. You just yep. like, yes, these are good questions. Yeah, yeah. What mm. do you think? And I'm like, what? He's good. Yes. And I, I was like, uh, oh, okay, yeah. I guess I guess I'll answer these questions for myself. Um, <laughs> and then I just felt like the lunch wasn't productive at all. I was like, no. I have no answers. <laughs> Filming is tomorrow. <laughs> He's like, maybe it's your character. You tell me. Literally, literally. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, okay. That's good. Uh, yeah. So that's. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to think about it now. <laughs> it is. It is. How long was the shoot for you? Like, how, uh, what was the total amount of time? Do you remember? I think it was at least like three and a half months. Yeah. Um, I think so too. Yeah. And we just did weekends. Um, yeah. and yeah, so I, there was quite a few times it was like consecutive weekends. I'd drive back down and then drive mm -hmm. back up. Um, yeah. And that was the first time I had ever done anything like that. Like traveled Amazing. that far. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, um, also that was the first time I understood like what being alone and like having independence was like, cause I, yeah. Like, drove by myself and it was like the first time I went to a coffee shop and just like sat down by myself and I was like sure. oh I don't have a friend here to talk to sure <laughs> I have to be a person <laughs> yeah no, truly I was like this, yeah. is, this is what an adult is yeah um so that was another really cool like attachment to the movie that I have for myself what's going through your head when you're driving three and a half hours to a movie versus home from shooting Oh gosh. Going home is definitely way harder. I'm yeah. like, uh, cause at least going to the shoot, I'm like going over lines. Like I have activities, Sure, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but going home, it's really just a drag where in the sense that like, um, like I have to wait a whole nother week until I can go back and like act. Right. Again. Um, I mean, what was, the, you know, I can't remember. Oh, sorry about that. Get it. Get it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. His name. Oh, you're going to love his name. His name Please is do. Sirius. <gasps> like Sirius Black? Correct. Like my favorite Harry Potter character in the world? Correct. Correct. Alex. He's not my dog, though. He's not mine. Doesn't matter. For all intents and purposes, he is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, serious. Serious. Are you serious? I'm, I'm busy. Oh, I can't. I said that to him on his walk this night <laughs> and it always you know and it's usually in front of somebody and I'm like I sound so weird being like are you serious serious <laughs> like what do you don't do that about? do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought of it like that <laughs> it's really funny oh man uh -huh. what were we talking about uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh the drive yeah, it's just, it's not as inspiring, the drive back. Sure. Uh, of course, I want to come home and see my family and, you know, be with my loved ones. But also. But yeah, but it was just really exciting to um, be working on a project. Like, sure. I just, I feel like I have more purpose when I'm working. Yeah. Project, you know. Right there with you. On set's the best place. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird kind of magical environment. You're like, oh, interesting. It's like, I don't, I find that it uses like a different part of my brain because mm -hmm. like life, you always have like a hundred signals going on at once of everything you have to worry about. But when you're on set, you don't, 
you're not really allowed to do that because you have to focus on what you're doing. And there's something yeah. about that yeah. pinpointed focus toward an idea that I, I really like. Yeah, I totally understand that. I've I've been trying to find more of a balance for myself of right like oh, yeah, on. of like <laughs> you know, of like enjoying myself while I'm sure. on set. <laughs> yeah. Um and like, you know, not being the the quiet, like <laughs> in her notebook sort of actor who like doesn't sure. talk to anybody. <laughs> um, I'm trying to, to be better about that. Cause I'm like, I swear I'm a nice person. I sure. swear. <laughs> I just like, I'm really, I'm a serious actor right. here. I'm yeah. working here. All yeah, right. I'm working here. Um, yeah. My, my, I most recently I did another feature film, um, another maybe. indie. I um, may be following it. Maybe <laughs> I'm so excited that you are because I'm I'm very stoked for it to come out. Um, I can't I'm very, wait. yeah. I'm. Is it bad? No, it's not bad to say. I'm proud of my work. Um, Good, you yeah. should be. That's that. So I'm right there with you. That right there. Same. 2022. Yeah. That was yeah. a big thing for me. I was like, I need to learn to celebrate my wins. Absolutely. Because I will always cut them down immediately or try and quantify them and be like, Oh, it's good for an indie. You know, it's good for this. And something. Right. Like, no, no, no. Right. It's good. Objectively. It, absolutely. And you know, what actually has been helping me because I feel like every time I do a film, <laughs> <laughs> like any piece of work that's been recorded, cause stage yes. is different stage. Sure. I'm like, that was crap. I'll do it again tomorrow. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> um, but for film, you know, like, it's done. It's there. There's proof. You can't, yeah, you can't redo that. <laughs> yes. Um, I have been my, you know, as we are all our biggest critics. Uh huh. Um, I immediately go like, wow, like I'm so much better now. Like, why did I let myself do that? You know, yeah. I'm so proud of my work then. Why? Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. Same. But what's going to help us is just knowing that the quality of our work then. Mm hmm was what we could produce then. Correct. Because those were all of our experiences, all mm -hmm. of our knowledge at that time. We did the best that we could in that period of time. And then the next period of time, we do the best in that section of time. You know, like- I like that. Yeah, there's just like a constant growth because we learn from every experience. Um, so, you know, even if we look back at um, past work and say like, well, that wasn't my best, but you can say, well, that was my best at that time. That's a very healthy way to look at it, Alex. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to need the step-by-step -step program uh, written out. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Just text me. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken me a long time. <laughs> On that then, what, what, what was the biggest thing that you learned from Tethered? Being as your first feature, it was a big, I mean, the commute alone is a massive thing that you have to learn about yourself. Like, yeah. how bad do I really want this? It's funny you say that was a really long commute because now my commute home is like six and a half, seven hours. And I do it all <gasps> the time, Brian, all the uh, time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I've scheduled it out where I'm like, ah, I'll talk smart. to this person at this time. And then I'll listen to this podcast at this time. And Perfect. The gas station then. <laughs> <laughs> so it just sort There's of helps no my cards, brain. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get well, it. It's a, it's a straight shot. Like that's a pretty boring drive. So. Yeah. Anyways, what I yes. learned from <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> what I learned was uh, <laughs> that commute was not so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, Perspective. That's what I yes, learned. <laughs> yes. Um, I learned. Oh gosh, I think it was more of a personal journey for myself. I feel like that was my first. And it's funny, it was an independent film, but that was like my first independent experience, like as a human uh, and like sort of gave me an idea of like what an adult is like, because I was 18, 19 years old. Were you? Yeah. Wow. What's our age difference? How old are you now? I'm, I'm 30. Okay. I'm yeah. Okay. Wow. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? But you're 30. Uh, yes, old man here. <laughs> My back no, is 40. Like, <laughs> I just have all these friends and I don't know, you know, half their ages. I just always assume they're all my age because I did all, the same thing get and along. then I hit 30 and now I see everyone as 
we're all one foot in the grave. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we're just like little kids over here flailing about. Yeah. 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 We know nothing. Nothing. Just true. We know nothing. <sighs> Facts. So you know that. <laughs> My God, I can't even figure myself out these days, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I really just thought I'd have it figured out by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you, know? you know, as a child, you just, the, this age group just sort of like morphs into one. Yes. Um, right, right. Yeah. Where you're like, you know, this is the time of all the love interests and these are the types of roles you need to have and do. And, and as I get older, I'm like, wait, that person was 40 playing- 22 huh yeah like that's a thing it's weird right yeah i'm yeah. like i have this weird thing where the one part of me doesn't want to age because of the finality ending but the other part of me is like the best roles are when you're like 30 and 40 as a man the they're the I know. best roles i know i totally connect with that because there is a a big part of my college career um which especially in musical theater like sure it just seems like we're always too young yeah. <laughs> to play the real, you know, meaty roles. Um, but there's a big part in college where I definitely was like, I feel like I just have to wait till I'm in my thirties to like right. actually have the roles I want. So like, what do I do in the meantime? Um, Live. yeah, well, I didn't figure that out. Actually big thing, Brian, cause you know, you're a good friend of mine. I'll tell you this. Okay, cool. Cool. It's just me and you. <laughs> Yes, just you and I. <laughs> and like, you know, the, the pandemic was a, a massive eye opener for me. Yeah. Because, you know, I'd, I'd always been used to the hustle and grind mm -hmm. of being in this career. Sure. Like outside, like as soon as college, I graduated, I immediately had a contract and then try to find another contract and so forth. And at one point I had like five jobs in Atlanta. I was, yes, Ooh. at the same time. Get yeah. it. Well, mind you, I only had five jobs for like a period of five weeks until I finally was like, okay, I'm going to go to four jobs now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too many. All um, right. One of those jobs needs to be sleeping and it isn't right yeah. now. Oh my yeah. God, I was not <laughs> sleeping. I kid you not, I had a job where I have to go to work at 4.30 in the morning, which I know is no biggie to you because you- I go to sleep that. around five in the morning, but that's a different <laughs> life. Different. I'm still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I was doing that and I would um, get off at like one and then I'd go to rehearsal and then sometimes I'd have another gig after rehearsal. So I'd be doing like three jobs once Ooh. and then the next day, like it's like a weekend and I have a day off of rehearsal. Well, I'm doing a different job. Now I'm serving from like 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 and then halfway in the day, I do a catering job at night. I just like, good God. Yeah, I, it was the worst cycle that I was stuck in. Um, I bet. Yeah. And, and there, therefore my craft suffered too, because I was just so exhausted that like I lost my passion to do acting, even though I was acting in plays, right. I didn't really feel connected to it. Um, just cause I was so spread thin and, um, yeah, I wasn't feeding myself in the right way. So sure. the pandemic, I mean, was, a, a blessing and a curse, obviously. It, very common. Yeah. It's, the, it's but, the both sides. Right. But I mean, I know my experience personally and for a lot of other people, it just made you slow down completely. Even if we were forced to slow down. Yes. I'm still very grateful that I was given the chance to slow down because I was like burnt out for three years straight. Oh, um, dear God. Yeah. And there just was like no no end to it. It didn't seem like an end. Um, so I finally like got some time to focus on myself Get and, it. you know, and like reimagine what my life would look like. Um, which to be honest, there's, I don't think there's a point to that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that helpful to imagine what your life would look like because it yeah. never, ever, ever Not looks possible. the way you imagine it to. It doesn't exist. It now's doesn't. now now's all we got. It's so true. I've learned this the hard way way too many times. The past yeah. is gone. The future yeah. doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. This is this is it. And then you can you can plant things now with mm -hmm. the intent of something growing in the future. Doesn't mean it always yeah. will. Yeah. Very important because a lot of people like just do the work now and then you, not always. There are external factors and there's bad luck and all kinds of crazy things. Mm. It's 
rolling with the punches is my superpower. And thank God that's the one I landed on. I'm so glad you have that. Life's wild. I mean, I I feel like I'm a walking contradiction all the time. Same. <laughs> right? Because I'm like, <laughs> I'd like to let go, but I'm like <laughs> I'm very much a Virgo. Sure. In and theory. I hold on. Yes, in theory. <laughs> Um, I'd love to just, you know, be a wanderer and um, right. let the wind take me. Of course. Um, yeah, but I'm also very much like a type A. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it comes in handy quite often, but it also. Does. I married also, a type A and it has hmm. increased my life by a lot. Right. But, you know, I'll speak for myself, but you also need therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like I can't control it all. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's really rough. But anyways, I think that's why I was drawn to yoga in college. Um, Makes sense. That was when you started it. Yeah, I started. I started yoga. Um, <laughs> of course, it's connected to my acting. Everything's connected to my acting. Oh my to. God. That's oh. that's how it works. Acting is a profession. It's a. Right. It's yeah. 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 Um. So I started yoga as like part of my warm up routine. Cool. Um, because I felt very disconnected from my physical body. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have a lot of training with my body. Like sure. I didn't, I didn't know how to let go. I was very cerebral. Mm -hmm. Um, that was my acting style. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I was just like, I need to know all the answers and like, and everything's controlled and I know all my tactics. And luckily I had some wonderful, lovely teachers in college who helped me crack out of that a little bit. <laughs> great. Great. Yeah. I, I just have my, one of my wonderful teachers, um, should probably never hear this podcast, but Kate, <laughs> Kate she just like, she truly was like, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like get out of your head. And I'm like, Oh, you're right. You're right. That's what you need. I know. That's she what it incredible. takes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I started yoga as sort of like a way to connect to my body and disconnect from my brain a sure. little bit, um, which works when you're doing like, um, you know, like a sequence. Yeah. Of, it sort of becomes second nature and you do sort of like come out of your mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that was very helpful to me. I connected to it and then outside of college, my first contract was in Virginia, um, for five wow. weeks. I know, right. That's far. I know, I know, but I had a, a lovely professor who was directing a show there and, um, he invited me along as sort oh, of my, cool. yeah, as sort of like my first professional show outside of college. Yeah. Um, but I, Oh, bro, this was the, <laughs> like, you know, look I in your to, eyes right now. <laughs> I, know, I know. Like I went to Fort Myers, you know, and that was me like being independent. I'm here sure. for a weekend, but this was five weeks. Right. This is over a month. This was five weeks. Longest. Sounds short. It's I over know. a month. It sounds short now, but it yeah. was severe. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. going through. I and bet. Yeah. That was the longest I had ever been away from my family, from my home. Cause I lived at home during college. So smart. I was, well, smart, but also hindered me because I was very, very <laughs> um, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. Um, I hear you. Yeah. But anyway, so I just like, it was like the first week being away from home and I was super lonely. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends who, who were going to be coming to join me on the production, like weren't there yet. And I just felt so disconnected from everything around me. I was just like, what am I doing here? What do I do? And I decided to go to a yoga studio and got my first yoga membership. And it just happened to be, okay, for all my yogis out there, they'll know what I'm talking about. Here we Maybe go. I'll, I'll explain to you as well. Please but, do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I started out with the, basically one of the hardest types oh. of yoga there is. Um, inadvertently, I just decided to choose this yoga studio because it was the closest to where Perfect. I was. Hey. Into the deep end. Yes. And it just happened to be a 90 minute Bikram hot. That's the yoga. hot one. Yeah. And it's not just, it's like the hottest yoga there is. Oh. It's like 103, 104 degrees in there. Ah. And it's not an hour. It's, it's 90 minutes. It's an hour and a half. 
Correct. Yikes. Um, and it, it takes your body a lot to adjust. To I that. bet. The first time I was doing it, I was like, I can't breathe. Like, yeah. how do I do this? And then magic happens. You just let go. You just forget oh. about, you just forget about it. You just forget about the, the tension and the pressure and your body adapts and like, and, and Bikram is the type of yoga where it's very sequential. So like you have gotcha. a very specific amount of moves, mm -hmm. um, and in a very specific order. Got it. So like it's, it's, I mean, so, you know, every teacher is different, right. really. Course. But well, mostly it's the same sequence every time. And so gotcha. you, it, that's why it becomes second nature. And you can sort of, you know, let go of your thinking process because mm. you just know what to do. You get in the flow of it. E exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I've seen Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my first experience, like with a membership. And I, I really feel like it saved me during that time. Like I, I found a community within cool. them. Yeah. And I, I just felt like really supported. Um, even if I didn't really know them, like I didn't really know. It's almost their... better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know you can be whoever you you're want. Very right. Just change your name. <laughs> <laughs> so right i do remember though leaving that contract and like i sent an email to the owner of the studio being like you don't understand like how much you guys helped me during this time like oh, that's cool yeah i was like new to the community new to being away from home for the first time and like i really felt like i had somewhat of a family um yeah yeah so i love that yeah and so then i went to atlanta probably about a week or two after that contract Wow. I know. I know. Quick turn on. Why so quick? You're just like, I was out. I'm out again. <laughs> well, I got an apprenticeship in Atlanta. Oh, okay. So I accepted this contract in Virginia before I even knew I was accepted to this apprenticeship. Look at you killing yeah. it on multiple fronts. I know. I always knew. I, I, I mean, a lot of the times you just have to try to go for it and let the pieces fall. Yep. Um, as the Virgo says, Indeed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So then I, I went to Atlanta. I did this, I had this nine month apprenticeship with the Atlanta Shakespeare oh. company. Much longer. Um, yes. Much, much more difficult, much longer, very difficult. Um, and that's where I sort of had to figure out, you know, how to survive on my own, like actually have a job, um, outside of college and, and pay rent. This is the right. first time I had ever paid rent. Sure. It was Sucks. very stressful. <laughs> In a new state <laughs> oh. with a job as an actor speaking a different language. It's mm -hmm. English, but also <laughs> Shakespeare. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. So again, you know, I felt pretty disconnected, um, pretty lost and lonely. And mm -hmm. I was maybe about two or three months into it where I felt myself like breaking down again. Um, where I was like, I'm going to find a yoga studio. Cool. And so I did, I found another yoga studio, um, and actually began working for them as their front desk, sort of like exchange, get it, yoga, you know, at the same time, Look at you bartering. I know I was I like, love it. I can't afford a membership, but <laughs> yeah. I need this. Like, can I have some more? I have some more. <laughs> I'll, I'll work for free, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but only like one one time a week because yeah. <laughs> I have five jobs. <laughs> um, quite hungry, sir. <laughs> literally. So that's what I did. And that yoga studio ended up like opening up more love for yoga. And I decided cool. to get trained in it. Awesome. Um, and I didn't, I mean, I didn't really plan to teach. Like everyone, everyone assumes that when you go through yoga teacher training, you're going to mm -hmm. become a teacher. But a lot of times for, for a lot of students, it's just a personal journey. Like mm -hmm. it's just a way to commit a very specific amount of time, um, to, you can kind of call it like another craft, like it's like a discipline. It very much is. Um, but also an exploration at the same time, like acting. Yeah. Um, it's a discipline, a discipline and an exploration. Um, <clears throat> so again, I was like very excited 
Um, because during this time I had sort of, like I said, lost some of my passion for acting because I was just so distraught with like being spread thin like that. Um, so yoga was my, my new passion. Cool. Yeah. And I, uh, became certified and continued to act and, uh, was really scared to teach, but I bet I, yeah. But I ended up getting thrown into it. I just, I'm ending up telling you my entire life story right now. That's the point. That's what I'm here for, Alex. Okay. What do you think That's we right. were doing? That's what this is. <laughs> I'm afraid of this. Actually, you know what? Stop talking. We're done. I think I got enough out of you. I'm <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I think I knew all of this beforehand. Oh, I'm God. fairly certain. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, this is, this is all, what do we say? Is there an acronym now for before? COVID. <laughs> it's BC, right? That's what it stands for. Yeah, it's always... <laughs> before COVID. The before times. After COVID. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so this was all right before COVID. I was um, opening a new show. I was doing Much Ado About Nothing. Amazing. And, yes. Amazing. Um, and at the same time, my yoga instructor, who's in LA, like, he mm -hmm. just has been inadvertently teaching me, cool. um, calls me up and he's like, you know, um, we haven't certified you yet, but I, I, I know you're ready. And also I might have this like private client who's like looking for an instructor and, uh, I want to introduce you. And I'm like, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, yes. uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm about to open a show right now, but yes, let me, um, <laughs> I can do that 100%. and meet this person. Um, and so we ended up <laughs> doing it all at the same time, which incredible. I, I can't tell you, I hadn't been that stressed since college, like finals. I bet <laughs> it felt like a college final. <laughs> I mean, you're in charge, private client. You yeah. need to know all the answers and it's a physical activity. I know. <gasps> I, I know. I ended up teaching this private client mm -hmm. as my test. Interesting. Yes. So okay. My test was, it worked. Yes. My, you're right. I was like, whoo, I have pulled it off. I acted my way through. Damn the, right. You did yoga instructor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, my next role. <laughs> <laughs> truly, no. so I, I mean, he didn't know that I had <laughs> little to zero experience teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> this was all in the classroom and like I had not taught anybody. <laughs> really. Sure. I mean, that's um, how it works though, isn't it? Like yeah. everyone is a first day teacher at one point, like yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. You know? But it's such, I mean, learning a, a yoga sequence as a teacher, I thought it would be easier as an actor, you know, just like innately having that, that skill. Sure. But it's totally different. I would actually compare it more to um, like being a choreographer or like being in dance class, you know, and like, um, remembering the dance steps, which as sure. a musical theater major, I have struggled with for right. a very long time. <laughs> um, it's, it's a completely different skill. It is not memorization. Well, I don't do musicals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't done a musical in a really long time. I have two right feet. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it might tell you something, um, which I'm hoping again, I'm hoping that a future musical theater job is out there and it's not listening to me. Maybe I'll be really good on that day. That's but right. You in will the be past. Yes. In school, <laughs> I, I think it might mean something that I was cast majority, like a majority of the time in the plays and not the musical. That's okay. You can't have it all, Alex. We just I, covered this. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still graduated, but yeah. I, I very much was you know, a lot of, a lot of teachers will categorize you as like an actor, singer, dancer, right. you know, or, or triple threat. You're just even in all of them, but that wasn't the case with me. Um, same. <laughs> yeah. They were just like, Brian, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Um, so anyways, uh, going back to the test, right. yes, right. yoga test. <laughs> yes, of course. That's where we were. Yes. That's where we are. Um, I, I did it. I pulled it off. He really liked me. He wanted to hire me. Love and, it. um, I didn't know what that meant at first. 
but it ended up being that he wanted to create a position for me like cool. as his private yoga instructor. What kind of yoga is it? Is it different than what you learned originally? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Go yeah. on. It's not Bikram. It's actually probably called best. Dharma. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> you carry Bikram... around a heater with you to your classes. <laughs> <laughs> Although Bikram, like Bikram still really fascinates me. I feel like, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's just, it's just different. Sure. Um, so but different it's martial called, arts. Yeah. It, it's this, this type of yoga is called Dharma, which cool. is really like an infusion of, uh, like the lost and oh right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that too maybe i knew it see yeah. i know things <laughs> i know you know things <laughs> um but it's like a vinyasa which vinyasa means flow so it's like a flow of i like it one pose to another kind of seamlessly or as a seam seamlessly as possible cool. um and and like a mix of like yin which is i, I just, feel you yeah i would just <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I feel you. Right. But it's like, how do you balance each other out? So it's like having Correct. some, some type of kind of vinyasa or like a power yoga where you sweat a little mm -hmm. and then you have a yin where you slow down and you do a bit more stretching, um, and, uh, meditation, I guess you could say, um, which I really connected to. And that's sort of how I like to teach now. Um, uh, but you know, depending on the client, if we're doing just like a hot vinyasa, then we're like, sure. <laughs> get in, break a sweat, get out. Yeah. Although, you know, I do have some, some clients who are like, it, I, I thought this was vinyasa. Like I thought we were going to go really fast. And I was like, oh no, I don't teach that way. We're, we're going <laughs> to stretch it out before we begin and down. when we end. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> sorry, my vinyasa is different. Um, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a, I had a yoga instructor in my, um, in my, my membership sort of deal in Atlanta Cool. where she really tapped into a more spiritual side for me, mm -hmm. um, which I think was another side of my curiosity that cool. I hadn't, you know, really dived into. So that, that continues to be one of my main focuses today with yoga is just to like, continue to cultivate, um, a more spiritual practice. Yeah and and not so much so like connecting with whatever sure <laughs> you know like I don't know um but more so connecting with like what I do know and that's like it's like trying to be as present as possible correct right which, which automatically feeds into my acting as well so it it was just like a perfect blend you know it like I love it oh it felt so good but anyway so it's more of like um like connecting to mother earth, you know, the element. So, um, uh, cause that's, it's very tangible and there's energy all around us. And that's very fascinating to me as well. So, like forest bathing. Very, yeah. Yeah. There's I actually, know things, Alex. I wonder if you know this, there's something called grounding. Grounding. Um, okay. Uh -huh. Go on. I'm Where interested. You, you just like you're barefoot on earth. Ooh, I like it. You know, and you're just, just like, like, feel it. Ex yeah. You're just like physically connecting to the ground. I love it. It sounds so simple, but, but it's also, actually, yeah, it's a very difficult concept to get your mind around. Um, if you're not used to, you know, connecting to things. Um, it's kind of profound because it, it makes you be so present to yes. where you are being present to stillness which sounds like a contradictory thing to do. But I'm telling you, that's like one of the yoga philosophies. Like yoga is not just about poses, about a physical aspect. Like yoga is a philosophy. It is a, a way of life. It's how you, how you live, how you um, hold yourself and treat other people and other things. Um, and so I think I really connected to that, which made me uh, a vegetarian. Awesome. How's yeah. that been? Uh, it's been great. Good. Great. Yeah. I was a vegan for a little bit, but uh, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what more do you need? I get it. <laughs> you know, cheese is one of the greatest things in the really world. Really hard to break. Yeah. Um, but this, that actually can help lead into our, my next 
journey aspect from getting yes. his job. Uh-huh. Um, he wanted me to be his like private yoga instructor full time. Cool. And the yoga community. Big commitment. That like doesn't exist. Like, oh, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Like being somebody's private yoga instructor full time. Sure. Is kind of unheard of. But it's really only in the cool. movies. Yeah. No. Yes. It's only in the movies. Um, but it, it was really cool. And I was like, heck, yeah, let's do this. And he was like, get it. In charge of my food. And I'm like, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I know I'm a yogi, but that doesn't <laughs> mean I know anything about like food and health. Right. That's a nutritionist. <laughs> yes. Yes. Slightly so was, different. Yeah. So I was very afraid of that. Um, like guiding him in that without like proper training. I was like, I right. You know, nutritionist, like I'm scared of that. Understandable. Um, yeah. But as, as life does, it just so happened that as soon as I got that job, I also opened my show and closed it in the same weekend because the pandemic blew up the world basically. Ah, so yikes. I never got to start the job and wow. I didn't finish the show. And yeah, Ooh. and I went home. I went to Orlando, moved back home to wait out the pandemic. And, um, you know, I kept in contact with him and stuff and just nothing was really happening. Um, so I, while all that was happening though, I was like, maybe I should learn more about health and food and nutrition. And, but I want to learn it in like a holistic way. Cause you know, um, so I became a certified holistic health coach. Amazing. I just like keep adding. Just why not? I know. Why but not? Feel, but Brian, I feel so silly <laughs> when people ask me like what it is I do. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> just look them dead in the eyes and say everything. I know. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'm an actor. I also walk dogs for a living. I'm also a <laughs> server. I also uh, like, I'm a certified yoga instructor and holistic health coach. And, oh. uh, and there's another job that I'm getting to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, it, it seems We're just like, getting warmed up. <laughs> I know. It just feels like I'm going back to my childhood of trying everything. Like honestly, such cheat. a better way to be. Yeah. That's probably why we connect so well, because yeah. there is that I find that interesting people are interested. Mm. And those are the that's why this is so long overdue, because I know you. I and like yeah. I have a genuine curiosity. If I don't know what it is mm-hmm. or if it's different from me, I'm automatically interested in it. Definitely. That's why my my whole show is 170 plus episodes of people from all walks of life. Yeah. Yeah. From like Oscar winners to FBI agents. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I know nothing about that. Teach me. Cause I'm so interested in the full breadth of the human experience. That's so and cool. you've done so much of it. So when you name all those things, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> all right. Those are things. Uh, I know, but, but you know, I'm like I said, I'm a contradiction. I say the pandemic made me slow down, but here I am. I got another <laughs> during it. <laughs> No, no, the bit slowed down, not yeah. stopped. That's yeah. the difference. That's true. You know, you keep that's... going. Yeah. That's how it works. No. I well, love it. So I was home during the pandemic mm-hmm. as if it's over. Yeah, right. <laughs> at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> at the beginning and through like a year, year and a half. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, during that time, I dabbled in like other studios, began teaching through Zoom online, um, just to try to get used to like what it actually to teach. Um, but, um, back in August of 2021, Mm -hmm. um, I was called up by this individual, um, but not for yoga. I was called up to, um, fill in for his assistant, his executive assistant. Okay. All right. uh, While she was on maternity leave. And I just was like, okay, I've never tried that before. <laughs> like this yes. is a very different route um, yep. for us, yep. but it just felt like a really great opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And, you know, I've been, I stayed in contact with him and it just felt like this was supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, so then I worked for him in this temporary position for four months and it just recently became no longer temporary. Get it. 
Yeah. So I am now also, you can add to my list <laughs> of things, executive assistant. Um, but I'll tell you who he is and, and why this just seemed like a perfect opportunity. Um, okay. Because while I was doing this independent feature last summer, mm -hmm. um, this position that he holds, he mm -hmm. just happens to be a executive producer movie studio owner in Atlanta. I am fairly certain. I think I know who this person is. Are you sure? Because I can't think of anyone outside of one person who has his own like ecosystem in Atlanta. Oh, oh. well, here's the funny thing, because you actually will be surprised that he okay. is connected to that person. Okay. Okay. He's connected to that person because uh huh. He used to be his president. Beautiful. And then when that certain person went on to buy newer studios. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. 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 His president bought his old studios. Oh, okay. And is my current boss. I right love it. So his name is drum roll. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> and if we need to later cut out his name, we can. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be a. <laughs> and everyone be like, what? Who is it? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Put your guesses in the comments, guys. Right. It'll be forever a mystery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, my my boss uh, currently, and he's he's an, an incredible person. His name is Ozzy Aru. Great and, name. Yes. And he was, uh, and the person you were thinking of. Uh huh. Is it Tyler Perry? Correct. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was, he was Tyler Perry's president for, I think like, oh gosh, we'll have to, we'll have to fact check this, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Except 15, I don't. 15 years. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> go by my word. That's not my job. Okay. <laughs> People in the comments, they'll give us to it. Yeah. They'll figure it out. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but That's yeah. That's awesome. So, Small yeah. world. I know. And if you look up my boss, you'll just see his story is really unique and like super inspirational. Would you consider it yeah. interesting? Uh, heck yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I have ideas. No, it's, it's a very inspiring and, and interesting journey that he took because he was, um, I mean, he started out as a security guard for Warner brothers. Hell yeah. I know. I know. And not just for any show, but friends. I've heard of it. <laughs> I may have seen every episode. And, and this gets cooler. Um, then he then became Jennifer Aniston's personal assistant. I have heard of her. <laughs> right, right. Which then, <laughs> which then morphed into also being personal assistant for Brad Pitt. Oh. Mm -hmm. And Dude. he may have worked with Ellen DeGeneres at one point fantastic yes yes wow and, and then went on to be tyler perry's executive assistant for about a year interesting until he was promoted to president so i have heard that phrase executive assistant once before recently <laughs> hey um, okay okay yeah. i like i like this yeah. so <laughs> wow. I, it just feels like a really cool like serendipitous way yeah. to mesh my worlds. I know? love it. But it yeah. comes from saying yes. That's the key is so many people have the fear, anxiety, and depression that lets them decide for them. It's yeah. like, just say yes. You've never done it before. That's okay. Say yes. Oh my See gosh. Don't get me wrong. I was so scared to take on this position. As, as you should have been. Yes. I was like, I have no experience. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. What I'm right. doing. Um, but that's but, the power though. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Like Carrie Fisher says yeah. this quote that I live by all the time. And it was about be afraid, but do it anyway. The confidence will follow. Yeah. It's about the action. The action is the, the whole thing. Yeah. So like, you don't have to be fearless, yeah. just do it afraid. Yeah. And then good things happen. At the very least you learn, you know, that's true. And you learn to sort of trust your abilities. Yes. Figure it out. You learn that you survived. You didn't die. <laughs> regardless yeah, of what your brain was totally telling you capable. absolutely yes yeah yes. well I, i'll say during the pandemic but yes, like of course. 
Yes. But during a time where like we were allowed to travel a little bit more, Mm -hmm. um, I took a solo trip to Death Valley. Oh, I know. (laughs) You know, we're diving into this. I are. Okay. Yes, of course we are. Alex. Come on. You can't be living things off my bucket list (laughs) and not have me ask you about them. Is it on your bucket list? So there's a few things that you've done on my bucket list. Number one, Grand Canyon, which I plan on doing this year. Mm. And then number two, uh, you went to Alaska and saw whales. Seeing a wild whale in person is another big thing of mine. Oh my and gosh. I'm making a trip later this year to um, Natural Bridge National Park in Utah. Oh, yeah. It's supposedly like one of the best dark sky parks in the country. Yes. Well, Utah, it's, I mean, oh. the whole state of Utah, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's kind of... <laughs> mind-blowing that it's sure. in the backyard like this whole time <laughs> i know <laughs> right so like nobody would have thought like utah <laughs> yeah oh, utah of all the places nobody ever told me that nobody me neither me i just i found out because i i, I want to see a night sky like a proper one with like next to no light pollution like yeah. i want to see actual stars right which most people yeah. don't see in their life so i found that's the place i'm so disappointed that you know we don't all get to see that because I feel like as human beings, like <laughs> it's kind of all there is. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I looked it up and that was the, there's a, that specific park is like the first ever designated dark sky national park in the States. And yeah. you see 15,000 stars with the naked eye alone. I was like, I would like to put that in my memory bank, please. Really so cool. I'm just going to sign up and do it. But you went to death Valley. Yeah. And the pictures look so cool. Yeah. What was the trip like? Talk to me. Why'd you take it? <sighs> Just cause? It oh, there's so many reasons I took. Yeah. It. <laughs> so many reasons. <laughs> the biggest reason being that as an actor, for you know the majority of, I mean, all of my adult life, basically. Sure. But, but like, I had always thought that I needed to be completely available. Mm-hmm. So like, I never planned any trips. I never planned Mm -hmm. travel, any money that I had or saved, it would go to acting classes and headshots and workshops, you you know, and and it never went to exploring the world, even though that had always like been a thing I wanted to do. Um, And I always, that was the one reason. And, And another thing was, I always thought that I couldn't travel alone, that I always had to be with somebody because um, society basically told me, you know, I'm a woman and it's unsafe to travel alone. Um, and I believed them and I was scared. So, you know, this is, there's been quite a few months that the pandemic has hit. I have slowed down in a way. I also started my health coach training and part of this health coach holistic training is learning about yourself. Right. And uh, I did this thing called the circle of life. And you just sort of find out which areas in your life are out of balance. And I just was not very satisfied with my life. Like sure, my joy levels, my, my level of happiness. And I was just like trying to figure out what was missing and I needed to get out. Sure. <laughs> I needed to be where I was. And for the first time in my life, I had the time. I didn't have a show, right? I didn't have an acting gig and, um, and I had some money saved up to do it. And so I, I personally don't really understand how I came to death Valley, like why I picked death Valley. Um, I mean, I have a connection to California just cause like I've taken family trips there and like, it's very personal and I'm in love, love with it. the landscape. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. beautiful. It's like a great it's another depth to my soul, I believe. Yeah. Um, I feel you. Yeah. Like the Pacific ocean is very different than uh, the Atlantic. Yeah, very. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know, I think I was just like looking on Pinterest, like beautiful places. And I was like, where the heck is this? This looks like yeah. cars. <laughs> yeah. And they, were, and they were like, Oh, it's in California. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, originally I was going to just like camp in my car, like do glamping and just like go. Perfect. Yeah. But I also real like had to be realistic and be like, this is my first ever 
right solo trip let's not get too risky here <laughs> sure because i'm being risky to begin with like right. i like, i don't like, want to tempt the fates <laughs> yeah yeah like i had already basically planned the trip and then told my parents that i was going alone and they were like i not love it they, i mean they really were not that excited about that <laughs> <laughs> like like <laughs> my mother just kept trying to get my dad to talk me out of it and i was like dad i'm going i'm sorry i'm going and my mom was like, so <laughs> anxiety driven <laughs> that the only way I could like sort of help the situation was invite her to like a weekend half of the trip. There you go. Compromise. So I was, you know, I was there for a couple of days by myself and mom, you could check in on me. You meet me there. And then I send you off and I go off on my own again. <laughs> yes. Um, and so that's, that's how it happened. And wow, it was the most amazing experience like uh, of ever i mean i know i'm yeah. only 26 i have a lot to live through still so far um, yes but so far within these 26 years it was like one of the most incredible experiences um it was transformational because how could it not be yeah i mean i was i mean i joke about this but it's literally a desert like yeah you're in the middle of the desert. There's no service. There were a lot, there were quite a few times that like, as I was going into the park, I'd call my mom and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to the park. I'll call you at the end of the day because we're going to lose service. And then know <laughs> <laughs> that I love you. Yeah, and it's going to be, I'll be fine. fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't know till the end of the day. <laughs> right. Or in three days uh, when you find my body. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's one day where my, my Airbnb did not have service still. So she had to wait till the next day. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah. Sorry, mom. Transformative for both of you in yeah. certain ways. But there was one crucial moment and I, I have it the whole story on my Instagram because it was just like so cool for me. Um, yeah. I was driving through this um, dirt road. <laughs> Perfect. Which I didn't know it was going to be a dirt road at first. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> and it ended up turning into like a sand pit. Oh, no. You know. <laughs> and As you do. Yeah. And you know, there's my, my car is like hydroplaning just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And I, I had never been so scared in my entire life because I was like, <laughs> bro, there's no one here. I have no service. I'm going to get stuck. Like I'm going to sure. get stuck out here. And there's like no tow trucks out here. Oh no. Yeah. I was really scared. Um, but like I got through it. Yeah, you did. And yeah. And <laughs> but another really funny moment though like of that little snippet is like I was chilling I had the windows <laughs> down I was blaring music I was like this is the best I'm a, I'm out in the desert Get it. yeah and then I ran through this sand pit and just <laughs> all this sand just goes woof, right into the car <laughs> My, my windshield wipers are going back and forth as I'm trying to like drive through this sand. <laughs> <laughs> just sand. <laughs> Not made for I'm that. like so scared. <laughs> <laughs> and I get out of it and I'm like just like stuck to the steering wheel, like oh sure. my god, I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets worse because of course it does. Because I'm lost. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm totally lost. Um, like there's no signs anymore. Fantastic. And I, I just keep driving for like another half hour without signs thinking that like, if I just keep going straight into and a desert. Point, yeah. And at this point I'm just like, I don't know what straight is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point I was like, you have to, like, I just said to myself, you have to make a decision. You're the only mm -hmm. one who can get you out of this. There you go. You either keep going and risk like not getting anywhere and running out of gas mm -hmm. or you turn around and go back to what you already know and go find that gas station <laughs> that you already <laughs> passed. <laughs> right. The one, you know, for sure exists. Exactly. exactly. I feel you. And so I chose that path. Smart. I turned around. There you go. But the caveat, the, if I could say it correctly, the caveat. There you go. Perfect. There is. With an Lawless. <laughs> was, um, that I had to go back through that sand pit. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, but this man. time you knew, you know, this was the rematch. 
my God. But also at the same time, I was like, I don't really know if I'm going in the right direction, but I will know when I go through the sand pit. Facts. So I'm looking for the sand pit and also dreading the sand pit. (laughs) 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 And I find it and I am, I am booking it. I'm like, do not slow down. And here we go. Yeah. And the car was very upset with me. Oh, no. <laughs> it was very angry. Um, and I forgot to put my windows up again. <laughs> yeah. I got out of the sand pit for the second time. <laughs> Just like so much anxiety. Like I'm not even enjoying my trip. <laughs> And I'm like, no, I'm racing this sun, uh, trying to make sure I get out of this dirt road with some sunlight still. <laughs> and it just was quite an experience. But I always go back to that very specific moment where I was like, you are the only one who can get you out of this. And I did. And I'm here now. I survived. So I, I know love it. I know that I am completely capable on my own. That's right. You are. Yeah. And that sort of led to more trips, um, to going to Alaska and like seeing the whales and how cool was that? How cold did it get? Oh my gosh. When you get next to a glacier. Yeah. I saw you in your little kayak. Oh my gosh. I know there's ice. You're you're next to ice. If you fall over, (laughs) you're dead. (laughs) No. uh, Well, I mean, literally the guys are like, we've never had anyone tip over. So please don't be one of those people. And I was <laughs> like, don't oh. break our record. I know. I'm like, I'm so sorry, guys. But the problem is I will probably be that person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, I hate to let you down. I know. But luckily, because I was solo. <laughs> right. Everyone else travels with another buddy. You know, I'm just the dumb so one. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get a guide in the kayak with me. So I'm like, okay, we're good. Oh, cool. Yeah. He did most of the work, you know. <laughs> Honestly, goals, right? Which honestly, he's like, <laughs> he's like a pretty like cool friend I have now. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like we became friends, and he just like would do the paddle, and he's like, no, take the pictures, Ex- experience Alaska. He's like a native, and he's like yes. experience it as we're like going through the water, and like he's like touch it, and uh, sure, yeah, he's really cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it was a really cool experience. Um, How close did you get to the whales? Cause I saw your picture. They were like a little bit of ways. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they were pretty much as close as we could get to them. That's um, so cool. yeah. And, and what, the coolest thing, and I didn't had no idea I'd witnessed this, but like uh-huh. a week before this trip, I was watching, of course I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching some documentary about whales Been there, and, been there. Yeah, and I was just like, so excited that like next week I'm going to see them in person. Yeah. And uh, they did this thing called bubble feeding. I've seen that with the ring. Yes. And it's where they work together to sort of feed, um, collect all all of the food in one area and and like eat together essentially. Um, And again, you'll have to fact check this because- I won't. It's just (laughs) what I thought I have. Yeah. (laughs) From my recollection, there it is. (laughs) um like this is somewhat of a new thing like oh cool like they didn't start witnessing it uh until like 2014 wow yeah yeah so i was still like yeah and i got to see it in person oh that's so cool we we actually went off course like they had like a radio and someone you know like another boater out there was like Hey, like, we think you guys should come see this. And they're like, heck yeah, we're bringing all our people over there. Yeah. And we went off course and we got to see like eight to 10 whales, humpback whales working together and bubble feeding. And you could hear their calls. It just like, oh, that's so cool. It was so cool. I mean, wow. I just feel like a lot of aspects of my life or the things that I hold value to are, are, um, all connected in a way. Yeah, of course. Because this new drive to explore nature and like travel and stuff is very much connected to my, like, you know, 
my spiritual craft with yoga and yeah. myself and connecting to my characters. Right. Because I'm connecting to myself more. Like the That's more I the learn about key. myself, the more I can learn about the characters I play. Yeah, hundred percent. They become more human because you become more human. That's something I figured out later on. Because yeah. you know, you're like, I need to play a character. I think my character would do yeah. this. And you're like, no, no, no. Play a person. Yes. And then that is so much more real. And that's what will connect with people. And like, you can't, a majority of the people that I have on my show, if they're just actors, I usually am not interested. I'm interested in the craft and that side of it. Because yes. I'll, I'll get granular about it. But I'm like, yeah. what's something else? And let's talk about that other thing that's outside of your job yeah. that, you, that makes you different. Because there's Absolutely. a million actors. And you, you know what you're tapping into, which is crazy. It's all, all of the marketing professionals <laughs> <laughs> for all of these actors mm -hmm. are saying the same thing to these actors on behalf of casting directors. They're, wow. they're literally like, we want to know what else you do and who yeah. you are besides yeah. an actor, because you're all actors. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what's, you know, what's unique about you? And, and that's usually what's really special about a character, mm -hmm. right? It's like, what is unique about that character? Yeah. It's the same thing with the person who's playing the character. Yep. They, they want you to be multifaceted because the character is too. Exactly. And that is something I did not know in college. <laughs> <laughs> and that I was in the library with <laughs> duffel bags of books. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not understanding that I needed to learn more about myself. Yes. <laughs> and not yes. about, you know, everyone else's craft. <laughs> yes. Live your life so you can bring the truth to the tech. A technique is useless without experience to back it up. And, and I, again, I, I seriously didn't even know that till recently. Like, same. Yeah. Same. I, I had a, um, oh gosh, an acting class here in Atlanta at one point, and we got to the end of the, you know, the, the 12 weeks or whatever. And, sure. and in this class, the specific class, I hadn't gotten many notes through the process. <laughs> like I, you know, I'm like, I I'm constantly curious. I want to get better and grow. And so like no notes yep. to me is not helpful. I was like sure. I'm money for you not to give me notes. No. Right. No. And so at the end I was like, what would you suggest I continue to work on? Like what, you know, what, what's lacking? What, and, and he, all he said to me was you need more life experience. <laughs> and I was pissed. I was I so bet. pissed because I was like, I just spent all this money on this acting class for you to tell me you can't help me. I have to help right. myself. And with life experience, wait, you don't know me. You don't know my life. <laughs> right. There's no you book know that I can just read. <laughs> yes. I, right. Right. It's like, you don't know how much experience in life I have. That's right. Um, I, I am, I have depth and I have. <laughs> <laughs> I was in an indie feature, one of my yeah. first gigs. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, that, that statement really hurt me then because I was like, how the hell do I do that? <laughs> How do, how do I do that? Um, until I just like started living life mm -hmm. and started traveling. Yep. I recommend it for everyone. I, I absolutely. It's agree. so important. It, I kind of think it's essential. I totally agree. Yeah. Just to get out and experience something different. Opens yeah. your mind to yeah. different ways of things. It makes you malleable. Yes. 100% yeah. agreed. And you learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about other people. and like. Oh, it's just, it's invaluable, honestly. Agreed. You know? It's good for your soul. It's so, yeah. it's so much deeper than anything you can possibly imagine. Like the fact that a sand pit, <laughs> an inanimate thing can yeah. have a lasting effect and change who you are as a person is the beauty of existence. True. Any, it can come from anywhere. Experience and, and, and change and growth literally yeah. anything. No, it's so true. And it's, it's the smallest, simplest moments that are the biggest um, because you talked about like super clear skies and like seeing thousands of stars. I, on that death Valley trip, I also visited some friends in LA. Cause I was like, I'm not going to be in California, not visit you. Come on. Um, and so my friend is also like a huge nature lover. Um, cool. She was like, 
you want to go to Yosemite? Like, just like last minute. She's like, you want to go? And I was like, heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't of I? Of course I do. Right. Um, and this would be, you know, the first time without my family going to this park. Um, and we only spent one night there. We drove up. It was like a five hour drive. We drove there. We did like two hikes. We had a night in together. And then um, when it got really dark, we went outside and we drove a little bit to where we knew nobody would be. Yeah. Um, except I was kind of scared of bears, but it's fine. Understandable. There are yeah. bears there. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, unheard of. Yeah. But uh, we got out of our cars and we just like, again, pretty scary. If you like, if you're just listening to what I'm saying, but we laid in the road, we just laid down on the road. Perfect. Yeah. In the middle of I the love road it. and looked up at the sky and we saw like at least five shooting stars back to back, like within 15 minutes. And it just, I, I literally, Brian, I saw the galaxy. Like I saw the Milky way. Like, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's actually, you know, fact check. I know that, exactly please. what you mean. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I could see the galaxy and I was, yeah. I had never experienced anything like that. It was like a very beautiful, special moment to share with, <sighs> with a friend as well. Like we'll always be connected through those types of experiences, you know? Yeah. Cause you're, so, you're open. That's the yeah. thing is like life puts up so much barriers and stuff for protection. Yeah. And like, you know, you have to survive and life is very difficult. So yeah. the more shield you can get, but when you open up, it's like, that's the, I was just talking about this with uh, Monique earlier today, that love is the biggest risk in the world because to open yourself up to love opens yourself up for the deepest hurt as well. The thing is, it's absolutely worth it. And it's so cheesy and Pinteresty, but it's oh. so the truth of everything. I so connect with that. Yeah. Cause I mean, like the most beautiful things in life are the ones that you take the most risk for mm -hmm. that you can get the most hurt. Yep. Um, and it's a give and take. Yeah. That's how it works. Absolutely. But also yeah. it's I good. Know. It is real good. I know. And you know, saying yes, taking that trip, going out and just being like, absolutely. You want to go to Yosemite? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's become a complete promise to myself that like, no matter what obstacles I have or what jobs I have, I have to make time for travel. And, and it used to be a mindset that I had that like, there's no time for anything or, you know, like you, you wanted to do something very specific and you're like, I don't have time. It's like, no, if there's always time. You make time. You just figure it out. Like, obviously everybody has different obstacles. Yep. Um, you know, you could be a, a caretaker, you could be uh, a mother or a father, you know, you're, you're doing all these shows, your job limits you, but even if it's just a day or a weekend to go somewhere new, and I highly recommend going by yourself, but also going by yourself with protection. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Absolutely. Okay. Right. You know, just keep a little mace on you. Like it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just your peace of mind, you know, or dog, free dog. Um, even better. Yeah. Oh, gosh, even better. I know you and I connect <laughs> on dogs for sure. Yeah. Dogs. I don't have a dog. I have a son and his name is Kubo. Exactly. Yeah. I, we, we were at a family gathering last night. We had dinner at, uh, at my brother's house. And at one point Monique was telling a story about her past dog. And she uh -huh. said the word dog and everyone looked at it really weird. And they're like, Oh, we're not talking about Kubo. Like <laughs> we had dogs. Kubo, that is our child. Like you don't under, we are so terrible when it comes to that, that like best in show. Yeah. We are those people times a hundred. Cause they at least acknowledge that they're dogs. I we're like, no, 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 <laughs> Th that is my son. And we call him our son. It's, it's too much. I completely, I completely understand because that's my niece. Yeah. Um, yes. My niece just happens to be a dog. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I had a friend who like he and I, we were getting to know each other as friends and, I just kept talking about my niece and how much I loved her and like, you know, and how much time I spend with her and, oh God, you know, and it was probably like a couple months when we finally like met up again and like started talking and I was talking about my niece and stuff. And he was like, oh yeah, it must be hard. You know, your brother being like a single dad. And I was like, <laughs> oh, did I not tell you she's a, oh, she's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, are you serious? This whole time, I thought you were talking about a human child. 
And I was like, well, technically no, but she is, you know. Yeah. She's a part of her family. I'm right there with you. hundred percent. My mother-in-law calls Kubo her grandpup. Oh my God. It's so crazy. You say that because literally to my niece, <laughs> Mia, um, which is staying with uh, my parents right now, but literally it's like, where's grandma? Where's grandpa? Like go find grandma. And she listens. She knows where to go. We do the same thing. Grandma's coming over. He gets all excited. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and we're like, where's daddy? And she goes like, Oh my God, where is dad? Like, yeah, <laughs> it, we're, it, we're the same. It literally, it's the same. I love that we go from these like really like existential enlightenment <laughs> moments to being crazy dog people. <laughs> it's just because they are so pure. It's like, we have so much love. We have to funnel them into something and they I, just happen to be the thing. That's profound. It makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. It's my boy. I know. Was there something in Alaska that was like a, a specific moment that stuck with you afterwards? Like, obviously, all of it's incredible and transformative. There was a moment that I was on my my sh- my ship, my boat, um, yes, for my boat tour to see the whales. And mm. it was like near the end of the trip and everybody went down. Uh, there's like three or four levels on this boat. Oh, cool. And they all went inside because it's freaking freezing outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Alaska. There's in Alaska. ice everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though it's June, I'm like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everyone went down there down inside the boat you know and I just was I just had like when I travel alone it's kind of beautiful because you can totally follow your instincts yes. you don't have anybody telling you where to go um and so I just follow my instincts of where I want to be and I wanted to be uh on the deck on top and like still experience the the boat trip um, sure and I just happened to be completely alone like there's like I don't know 250 people on this boat and I am completely alone <laughs> love it and I also here's another thing about traveling alone you just innately make friends like everybody's just so friendly yeah. with yeah. you and it's you great make, yeah uh and you're just innately more friendly with them too <laughs> yeah so the entire crew, the the whole crew, like would give me free stuff all the time. So Get it. <laughs> yeah. So the whole time they're just like giving me a whole bunch of hot chocolate. So <laughs> love it. Yeah. I was just living off of hot cocoa. Perfect. So I'm on top of the boat with my hot cocoa and like all bundled up. And, uh, that was just like my moment of peace of just like feeling the mist against my face with a warm cup in my hand and just like being present, like being that moment. Um, though, those are the specific moments on those like traveling trips that like stick with you. The pure present, just, yeah. ah, nothing else exists except for this moment and you're yeah. cognizant of it. Abs- yes. It, it's very much like an awareness that like I am present. Yeah. Um, cause I kind of feel like that's the definition of being present. Right. <laughs> I think maybe <laughs> that's true. Maybe it's more I profound when you're aware of it. <laughs> that's a much better word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For sure. yeah. yeah. So hopefully there'll be more trips soon. I, I planned a whole uh, family trip for my parents and my brother last year for us. Cool. We did seven national parks in seven days. Beautiful. Yeah. It's quite a feat, but I definitely going to take more time next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe two parks at a time spend more time sure but Um, you don't know till you learn it's true and uh and another solo trip for myself is definitely coming up in the books cool Um, what's on the list well there's a lot on the list yeah good and i just got my passport fantastic i've never been out of the country i've never been out oh you were in for a treat i know but i feel like i should explore my like this country before I... i i did it backwards did you? I've been to I've been to like twenty countries outside the U.S. Mm. and I've been to I think half, if not slightly more than half of the states. Yeah. So not quite, not well, quite. I mean, that's interesting. We talk about that because I never had an interest really of like uh, exploring <laughs> the U.S. Sure. Until I was forced to basically. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Because I was like, I gotta get out of where I am, but I can't go out of the country. Sure. Grass is oh, always greener. Yeah. But then I noticed that like, oh, wow, no, like 
our landscape offers us a lot. And it's huge. And it, it's so diverse. Like yeah. just in Death Valley, there were things that I couldn't comprehend. Sure. And in all like the same area. I was like, yeah. how do you have this mountainous structure next to this uh, salt water basin next to this, these sand dunes, you yeah. know, like, I was like, it doesn't make sense. It's just sure. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what's on the books? Um, probably for my family coming up are going to be, uh, more national parks. Cool. Um, Can't so go like, wrong. Yeah. So like Glacier National Park, uh, the Grand Tetons, uh, Yellowstone has been one of my dad's like most wanted trip of all time. Sure. Um, and then for myself, I'd really like to explore the, the West coast again. Um, but more so in like Washington, like Mount Rainier. There you go. The co- yeah. Just like Oregon, maybe. Sure. That that's, that's what's next, but I definitely like need to go to Scotland. Same. I, I joke about this, but I, but not really joking. I'm totally completely serious. When I go to Scotland, all I want to do is find a, like a great rock with a great view. Just sit on it. I did that in Ireland. Changed That's me it. forever. That's all I want. I just want to sit on a rock. <laughs> See, people don't understand. There is, there's a lot of profoundness in that because present in that place, Absolutely. feeling the thing like, yes, it's so great. Yes. And just as an actor, it just ties it all into it. I know. It feels like a very Yoda thing to do, though. Like <laughs> You're talking to the right guy. Right, right. <laughs> like, I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> yeah, just be, exist. Yeah. And then yeah. take, and then remember this. And then you inherently gain confidence yeah. as a person because you realize, oh, right, I am this. And then you can go into the world as this, as opposed to this in relation to that. Uh, and then absolutely. you can operate more with, yeah, it's just, oh, it's the best. But yeah, you know, like Italy and um, yep. New Zealand, Iceland. Oh, Iceland just looks so cool. Agreed. Um, yeah. And I want to go to the Volcanic National Park. Yeah. What? You have to, right? It's there. I just like, what do we live on? Yeah. It's unbelievable. So how did, how did, did I come to be? <laughs> I knew if you were going to go right into that from there. Hey, say it again. What is what? Okay. So how did you mad? Yeah. Blah, how did, yeah. yeah. Did I uh-huh. TM come to be? Come to be. Indeed. Okay. Here we go. So, here we go. Deep breaths. Go. Yes. So um, I have a friend who I went to high school with, but we, like fantastic yes and uh we we weren't super close then but like we knew of each other and like we were were, like close acquaintances and then uh we went to the same college but we uh we didn't interact with each other that much like you know my theater department was very different from the film department she became a film major I became a musical theater major we worked on uh one of her short films together uh her as a like a director slash dp Oh, sweet. Which um, yeah. one is this? Uh, this was called Weighted. Nice. Yes. And so, yes. So we pre- we did that and then we just sort of, you know, went on to do our own things. And uh, I don't know what happened. I think she saw a trailer at Full Sail of this ballet short film that mm-hmm. looked like our short film Weighted. And she was like, what the heck? She just like, she just like messaged me like randomly. This was, I think this was like, oh, like May or April of 2020, 2020. Oh God. What are the years? Who knows? Yeah, 2020. They don't exist anymore. <laughs> oh, uh, they don't, they don't exist. Um, nope. And she just like randomly messaged me and she's like, Hey, did you do another ballet short film? Because I just saw this thing on full sale and like, you know, we're definitely from UCF, not full sale. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, now that you ask, yes, I did. I did another ballet short film at full sale. Yeah. I was like, Oh, cool. That they're like doing a like a trailer with me in it. And I had no idea. They're just like here to uh, like, <laughs> don't whatever. even know. Killing it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's very cool. 
And we started talking and, you know, trying to catch up, like, what have you been up to? And she's like, oh, I'm writing this feature film for my grad degree. Ooh. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, I would love to read it. Like, and it was on uh, multiple personality disorder, which is now called dissociative identity disorder. EID. <gasps> Did. Interesting. Uh, yes. I know. Okay. Clever. Very okay. cool. <laughs> uh-huh. I uh-huh. see you. Uh-huh. So I read her script and I was like crying through the whole thing. Sure. I just felt so connected to this character, or you could say these multiple <laughs> characters. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I was just so excited once again. You know, I talked about like not feeling passionate about my craft for a little bit. Cause I was just so spread thin mm-hmm. and I read her script and I just like felt the passion come back. I was like, no, I, cool. I think it's just cause I haven't worked on things that I like was really intrigued by, you know, like perked my curiosity. Um, and so I told her, I was like, when you do auditions for this, I would love to be a part of it. Like I would love to audition for your screenplay. Cause it's just, amazing like I love it yeah and she was like oh my gosh yes please and it wasn't until a couple months later that she was like hey it's that time like would Ooh. you audition and I, yes and I was like <laughs> yes, yes yes right <laughs> yes. here we go here we go so I did the audition and I got a call back and amazing yes yes and <clears throat> I just remembered during the call back um one of my really good guy friends um who just did his bachelor slash bachelorette party the night before in tampa perfect and my callback was in orlando the next morning <laughs> so i was, like i didn't go to bed till like i don't know 4 a.m and then i woke up at, <laughs> you know and then i woke up at like 7 a.m to go drive sure. to orlando for my Take call a little nap <laughs> I, hey I it works I think maybe I napped for like an hour and then I went to my call back, like Amazing. very disoriented. Perfect. It's the best <laughs> place to be. Right, because you know, they were having me do, you know, besides like the, the other characters, the other personalities um, was, you know, dissociating. <laughs> <laughs> She's really good at that. I know. I was like, this is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I got this in the bag. <laughs> no, I had so much confidence when I walked in. I, was yeah. like, I do have this in the bag because I am not here. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> that was like the only times, you know, that method acting was like to your benefit, you know. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and so, but come to find out, um, for, for other circumstances, other reasons, because, uh, they didn't know if I was going to be in Atlanta or Orlando and they didn't know how long their, their filming process would be because COVID was up and down, you know, and so I didn't end up getting the role at first. Uh, I got offered a different role, a smaller one, um, in a sense that like we could schedule it around, you know, me coming back in town kind of thing. Sure. Because being the lead of this this dissociative identity disorder film is like, like a massive chunk of the film. It's like 80, 80%. Um, and so, uh, that's how it was. And then I went on my solo trip to death Valley, Ooh. had a transformative experience, came back for Thanksgiving and my good friend, Sarah called me and was like, Hey, uh, Due to other circumstances, we like, do you think you'll be in Florida, like in Orlando for a long period of time? And I was like, you know what? It just so happens that I will be that like, I don't really have anything in Atlanta happening right now. So I'm just going to come back home and stay home for, for quite a while. So yeah. And they're like, great. We'd like to offer you the role. And I was like, I was like, sweet. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. That's right. Yeah. Um, be, I mean, maybe you feel this too, but there are certain roles that you audition for that just feel right. 100%. Like, yeah. Like it's, it, I'm not sure how to, 
how to describe the feeling, but it's like a very intuitive gut. It clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It, it, it's a click where you're just like, no, I'm completely aligned and connected. And like, like this role is mine. Yeah. Like, I don't even know. Cause I was, I was bummed when I found out I didn't get it. And I was so confused because I was like, I felt it click. I had the click. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like 90% of the time when I feel the click, I have the role. Yeah. So I was very confused, but th- like I said, there were, there were other reasons behind those choices that had nothing to do with my, my performance and, you know, how I connected to the character. Sure. But at the end of the day, like the click was still right. <laughs> yeah, it was. The click was right. And, you know, she and I talk about that experience all the time where we were just sort of like, I think it was just meant to happen that way because if I had gotten the role when, when she was offering them in the mm-hmm. first place, I wouldn't have been able to go to Death Valley. And had you not gone to Death Valley, you would not have had the depth of experience to play the role the way you do now. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Completely. Because they started rehearsals while I was in Death Valley and I, you know, just paid no mind. Sure. <laughs> You're busy with sand pits. I get it. Exactly. I was very busy. I had no service. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that just sort of like happened to work out in the most beautiful way. And my friend Sarah and I became even closer. Now we're like mm-hmm. some of the like best friends. And I became her maid of honor for cool. <laughs> yeah. Recently. Recently, yeah. She just congratulations, Sarah. If you happen week. to be listening. Yeah, congratulations, Sarah and Zach. Um, which Zach also helped on the on the film. Get you a supportive spouse. He is our, our lead editor um, and sound mixer and like, hell yeah. Yeah. Like most of the time it was just the three of us filming scenes. That's so cool. I say just the three of us, but really it was like the four of us. Cause I had to like play my, play right, yeah. my <laughs> sure. Uh, there's a big portion of the film, you know, spoiler alert that like, <laughs> I'm just acting with myself. <laughs> I've seen pictures. How did they, how did they shoot that? Did you just shoot the whole thing from one side and then from the other and just Uh, splice it? So it, there are a couple different ways to describe it. Um, you should definitely ask Sarah and Zach, the more technical. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to (laughs) to my knowledge, uh, and we, we mostly had more than one camera. Okay, cool. That one camera in one place and you have another camera at another angle and and in that way, you can sort of splice them. So I'll I'll be in one outfit and costume and um, personality in one scene or, you know, in one cut, do the whole thing. We will not move the cameras. The cameras stay. Smart. And then we Easier sort of, to splice. Yes. And then we sort of block it out in a way that like, I don't do a ton of like physical interaction with my other personality. Smart. Um, yeah. Cause that would, you need doubles or very good timing. We did have a double, I think once or twice, um, cool. actually did need to do both of those, uh, techniques of having sure. a double and do the, the camera angles. Cool. Um, yeah. So I will say that like this film was a freaking challenge. <laughs> I mean, was... you're playing multiple versions of a person. <laughs> it was... Yeah. It was really difficult because one personality was so difficult to get out of. Interesting. Yes. And and yeah. so I found myself having a really difficult time. Um, actually, I can use the names of the characters. I, I had a really difficult time getting out of the mindset of Stevie and going into Genevieve. Mm-hmm. Um, and just because Genevieve is, um, I wouldn't say passive, but she, she is, um, a bit more out of control. Like she's not quite in control of things. Gotcha. Passive in that way. Um, whereas Stevie is very much like a go-getter and like makes things happen. And she just is very impulsive. Like, like, like whatever she feels instinctually, like she just does it. And I, I don't know, maybe my, my body or whatever, just like really connects to that. And I was like, we're sticking in this. We're staying, we're not leaving. Yeah. And yeah. And, but there were many, many days where I had to go back and forth between cuts, even not even between scenes, but between cuts, Goodness gracious. Change my hair, my makeup and my outfit 
to do a different cut of the same scene. Wow. In the same day. You got to feel good though at the end. Like, have, are you finished shooting? Yeah. It's yeah. got to feel good knowing that you did it. I know. We finished principal photography in August and cool. Yeah. So now we're in post and uh, she sends me clips in, here and there. And I'm just sort of like, I, I don't know. I don't recognize myself anymore. Like I, watch, like I watch it and I guess good. I don't know. <laughs> that is good because then you're, you've, you've, that's the technique. I've dissociated right? myself from it. Yes. That's the goal. Like if, yeah. you, if you, if you look and you're watching yourself working, you're like, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Then you're like, oh, well then, because you are not the character, but there's parts of you in the character. So it's like, that's your physical body. But yeah. ideally, yeah, you know, that's what you want is to not see, to see a different person with looking yeah. in the mirror. Yeah. That's so cool. It might be. I, no, I agree. I just, I think I never took the time to see it. Sure. That makes sense. Like see it in that way, you know, from past productions and stuff. Sure. I, I never saw it from that perspective until now, which makes sense because I'm a different person now. And you know, like a experience. Exactly. It's like, it's like you said earlier, when I compare like Q to Richardson and uh -huh. blisters, I'm like, yep. that's the same person. <laughs> it right. is right. Night and it's not even night and day. It's a different metric system apart from each other. Cause Q, I remember watching Q and at the end being like, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of similarities. I can see it. Like the lines are blurred right? between blisters and right. stuff that I'm doing. I'm like, oh, sweet. I cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. You know, like a year from now, you'll go like, sweet. I cracked it. I can't even imagine. I <laughs> it's I do. I love that experience is it, it adds up. It's cumulative, you know, and like we're only going to get better. And it's amazing. Even like stills that I've seen from Did I? I'm so excited because I was there for Jane. Yeah. I thought it was still really good. So I'm like, crazy to think that way. She's ascended. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're so funny. My God. I can't wait. I do not think of myself that way at all. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Oh my gosh. I don't think of myself that way at all. <laughs> I can't even watch playback. So I hear you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh. That's wild. Is there, so then what was something from this production then with Did I that you either learned or felt yourself level up or like, what's the biggest takeaway from this one? <sighs> well, I will say I learned what it was like to sort of create a routine for myself. Um, Cause there were times that we like did consecutive shoot days and, and I was not used to that. Right. Makes sense. Um, so I had to figure out, I learned a lot about myself in ways to like how to recover from certain scenes. Smart. Uh, yeah. And how to prep the next day uh, or the previous night or, you know, um, so I sort of like created my own kind of like checklist of like, you know, I, cool. yeah, yeah. Which is, which is really cool. Um, like I said, I learned I learned a lot about myself. Every, every production I learned a lot about myself. So I learned that I'm totally capable of holding a feature on my own, but you know, just as Jane, I, I was a supporting, I wasn't, I mean, I know I technically I was like a supporting lead. I was, you know, the lead female, but we didn't have many females, but right, yeah. <laughs> by contract that was on purpose. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, it was a different experience. You know, I was just needed here and there. This one was like, no, I was needed the majority of the time and more because I was not just the lead. I was like both leads. If that makes sense. That's so cool. Yeah. It was definitely a huge challenge and, um, you met it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, very excited for it to come out, man. And, and to just sort of like, I don't know, ap appreciate the work that we all did together. Cause it very much was a collaborative process. Um, sure. And actually was, uh, like a huge aspect of like another main focus that I'm doing right now, which I know you're going to, you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, but you were just, you just got executive assistant, like calm down. Let's but, do it. I would never say calm down. No, you got I more. Right. You still have light in your eyes, Alex. Keep going. I know. <laughs> I know. So I am actively pursuing, um, 
like learning about being a producer. Ooh, yeah, Alex. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, I know it's kind of like, you gotta make your own roads, man. It, it just sort of happened when, when we were working on, did I, I sort of like inadvertently became like a co-producer Cool. Because I just was so involved in the script and scheduling and costumes and set and location. Just like, yeah, I just sort of like became part of the creative process and I loved it. I just. Interesting. Makes sense. It. Type A organization, getting stuff done. I see the thread. Yes. Yes. And you know, as actors, I mean, a majority of our time, yeah, we're, we're doing the work of like auditioning, but I just want to do it already you know yes. like, I don't want to wait for somebody to give me permission yes that's the worst part about being an actor you got to get permission to do it you got to be cast so which cast yourself which you very much know yep doesn't have to be nope that's what it, that's literally what it came down to I was like I know for a fact I can play this role so I'm gonna write it myself yeah and here we are yeah so I am That's doing very more, exciting. Yeah, I'm doing more research. I'm looking into it. And it just so happens that my new boss, you know, is, is in the world. Uh-huh. My know a thing or two. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very, oh, I feel very lucky to be where I am right now, even though sometimes it gets hard, you know, like I, I'm talking about all the great things that are happening. Hey, dream job, still a job. Mm-hmm. Everything is work. You just learn to enjoy it and take your wins. <laughs> it, it is. It is very difficult um, yeah. in this industry, if anything. So it's definitely a long journey. Uh huh. Been at it for years. Yeah, I've been at it for years, but it is not linear. And no. <laughs> <laughs> and I never ever thought that like I'd be interested in producing, directing, maybe. But producing? It's a different beast. Yeah. And now I'm kind of like obsessed at the moment. Good. Stay yeah. obsessed so yeah. that I can ride those coattails. Absolutely. Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh, you're in, Brian. You're in. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's just like, you know, especially in this industry, you need to surround yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. um, and do good work. Yes. That's that other side. It's, you know, preparation is, uh, luck is preparation meets opportunity. Yes. yes. And so that's, that's the the merging of two worlds, right? Like it's, yep. it's about having kind, good people who you want to spend your days with, you know, yeah. you have to, uh -huh. um, and also people who have similar values, who mm -hmm. will do the same amount of work as you, because you all are passionate and believe in the project in similar ways, you know, and that add value to the production. Because yeah. they can be a great person, but if they're a terrible actor, you might not be putting them in the front seat, you know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm like, I'm not saying that you, you know, anyone's all just because you're a good person. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They don't care. Be a good actor first. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bonus that you're very kind, you know? That's right. I did it backwards, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? You never know what's going to get you in the room or who you're going to talk Facts. to. Facts. with. And, and you, like... It's, it's a very strange world. I was just talking to my yoga instructor today, earlier today, uh, about like how we got to where we are right now and how it's just such a strange world. It is. I love it. It is endlessly fascinating. Yeah. Because you just never know. Yeah. And but, that's exciting. But the same with your tattoo, right? Yep. Like where, where there's light, there's also darkness. Mm -hmm. A lot of time takes darkness to appreciate light. We need both. Do you have any advice then for either actors or human beings or, and wow. I'm taking the oars out and advice for people who want to solo travel? Wow. Okay. Bits from each. Be like, all right, this, 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 here's, here's a pitfall or something <laughs> I was not expecting that maybe like what, for example, yeah. I remember when you posted that thing on Instagram about the pit and your big thing was like, get a Jeep. <laughs> you know? Repeatedly, get a jeep yes a jeep. exactly exactly <laughs> stuff like in those arenas what do you got give me give me some nuggets of wisdom oh gosh nuggets of wisdom those are really big questions especially like the human yeah that one's easy Advice to a human uh get a therapist like i just think it's so important to have somebody to process 
life with. Agreed. And you know, and not everybody has a partner who they could do that with. Um, and you know, I, I often feel that some things I have to say will like be a burden to my family. So I feel you. Right. So a therapist, like that's exactly what their job is. So you don't feel like you're a burden to anybody and you're able to have that space. So I would recommend a therapist. <laughs> Check. Be a human therapist. Therapist. Okay. Uh, as an actor, <laughs> um, as an actor, I would say learn as much about yourself as possible. Ooh. Yeah. Because, and I mean, a lot of times the only way to do that is to just like continually live experience, just like go every day by day, live on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, seek those things that inspire you seek those things that light a fire in you and like have that curiosity, because those are the things that separate you from other people. The things that you're curious about are the things that make you unique. And, and that's exactly what you need as an actor, because once you understand yourself more, you can understand other people more. And I did that. I did that the opposite way, Sure, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know, you know, I was just a child. Don't know till you know. Um, and then solo travel. Um, you have to plan. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I seriously believe that, you know, especially as a solo traveler, I mean, the number one thing is safety. Like, and that's not just like with danger of like other people or uh, other animals or like, you know, walking off a cliff, you know, like, it's more so like getting lost. Right. Uh, running out of gas in a desert. Exactly. Exactly. Getting stuck in a sand pit with no service. <laughs> no. Uh, so the planning aspect is really important, like really doing your research and knowing your area so that you, you can create safety for yourself. Smart. Because the area is, is not going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Wow, I can't believe I just said that. Look at Keep you. That. Look at all look at all this Keep wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just but, throwing uh, it out there for I know. Fruit. I know. But I just like, you know, I've learned the hard way. After that stand pit day, um, I definitely was like, we are tomorrow, we are staying on paved roads only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did the sand pit already. We're good. Yes, correct. And I was like, because we just don't have a Jeep. Okay. <laughs> no, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, also pro tip by Jeep. <laughs> you, oh man. I think that was one of my biggest struggles though, because I felt like, I felt like I was in this beautiful landscape and like by myself. And I was like, I'm free. I have freedom. Sure. And yet I was limited by my vehicle. Gotcha. I was like, Dang. like, I'm still limited. So close. Yeah. So close. Next time. Yeah. But Next also, time get a Jeep. Yeah. I, I mean, I recommend people doing solo travel just because it is like a really fast way to learn a lot about yourself really fast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I also really enjoy like traveling with another person. Mm -hmm. um, Creating memories. Yeah. Bonds. It's just, I feel you. Yeah. There's something really special about sharing your experience with others. Totally. Which is, you know, literally the point. Like, being, yeah, this is like literally being an actor and telling stories, like mm -hmm. sharing experiences here. We're trying to connect. Yep. It's um, like it all fits together somehow. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> we might have stumbled onto something, Alex. What? <laughs> wow. Okay, universe. We hear you. Right. Yeah. Hear you. <laughs> so yeah, I would I would suggest like people go solo travel, but also travel with others. And learn about your travel partner, like learn yes. how they travel. Because when my family traveled together, we realized <laughs> that we all have very different traveling styles. Like I'm like, the sun is up. I'm up. Let's go. Let's get out. Like, we're not here to stay in this Airbnb. Let's go. We have an itinerary. And you know, my mom and dad, they're like, well, hold on, let's have our coffee. And like, let's slowly wake up. And, and Oof. my brother, you know, has a completely opposite schedule from us. He sleeps during the day and is awake at night as a nurse. And so it takes him a bit to wake up, <laughs> be awake. So find your, your traveling partner, but uh, you know, once you have a little structure, 
you can you can have freedom with it at the same time. Solid advice. You go by Alex because everywhere is Alexandra. I just know you as Alex. So Alexandra is basically what I've decided my professional name is. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Alexandra. Yes, it's my business name is yeah. Alexandra. <laughs> um, at least I hope SAG still has that available for when I become SAG. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to change it later on, you know. Just add an extra L. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah alexander's just like my business name alex is mostly for like close friends um got it but also i have a lot of close friends who call me pika okay Um, got it that's only when i'm mad at you yes yeah (laughs) i've had some professors i've had some other friends who call me alexandra and i'm like okay whatever sure go with it okay okay just yeah. making sure, you know, yeah. I've known you for too long and I've never asked I that know. question. I know. <laughs> What's well, your actual name? <laughs> <laughs> I figured after seven years, I might try it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, God. But hey, solid advice. And you will not believe it. Or maybe you will. We've been talking for over two hours, Alex. I mean, I was expecting that. You survived. We had, I mean, <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that because, I mean, it's been too long. It's been way too long. This has been amazing. It has been amazing. We will have another chat. Maybe we don't have to record it, but then I'll ask you about you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not if I lose my phone. Oh, so, no. Gosh. <laughs> although I have to say, before I release you into the wild, yes. where can people find your stuff online? Where can they find you? Okay. Give me that stuffs. Okay. So, Probably the first place is IMDb uh, under Alexandra Pika. There it is. Uh, Yes. Second place is probably Instagram uh, at symbol Alex Pika, A-L-E-X-P-I-C-A. Boom. Uh, Boom. And uh, let's see, what else do I have? Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I do have a separate health coach uh, Instagram account called- Healthy being with Pika. The width is just a oh. W. Yep. Um, so that's on Instagram. And I also have a separate website for my health coaching business Ooh. under the same name, healthy being with Pika.com. Get that SEO. Yes. Yes. I well, I'm like actually I'm creating a, a health coaching uh, sort of course right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. What so can you be- killing it? Yeah. I just thought, you know, I was like, as, as a health coach, I realized there were some things that, um, my clients were missing as a foundation, mm-hmm. um, that I just felt like it was really detracting from any progress we'd be making. So I was like, I really feel like I should just like put all the information I want them to know, or would be helpful in the future for us sure. to work together in, in a course that's like easy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love so it. That's coming up in the future besides, you know, being a producer. Everything else. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> everything we <just> talked about. <laughs> oh, I just can't stop. Uh, I can't. It's, I don't want you to. Listen, this has been long overdue. You're one of my favorite people in the whole world, but you know that because I tell you all the time. Brian, you're fantastic. Thank you. You're fantastic. I'll I stop just, it. I just think you're an incredible person. I really do. Uh, well, no counting for taste. And. <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. 
Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.